Tonight on the Northwestern News Report, Andrew Yang is speaking to students. We're there live. Plus, nonprofits welcome Afghan refugees. And Northwestern's club crew competes at the head of the Charles Regatta in Boston. Those stories and more tonight on the Northwestern News Report. It's your news right now. Good evening and welcome to the Northwestern News Report. I'm Megan Leibowitz. And I'm Elizabeth Betts. We start tonight with former presidential candidate Andrew Yang. He just finished talking with students as Northwestern College Democrats fall speaker. And an end's Julia Richardson is live outside of Khan Auditorium where the event just wrapped up. Julia, I understand that there was a demonstration during the event. What more can you tell us about Hi, that? Hi, Megan. So, no, yeah. No, no, no. Hi, Megan. So, yes, students did walk out of the protest, uh, out of the Yang event about 10 minutes in, um, just shortly after Yang had started speaking. And the protest was organized by Students for Justice in Palestine and a few of their ally groups. Um, they did send us a statement, and here's what they said. They said, quote, we walked out because Andrew Yang's past remarks actively disregarded Israel's indiscriminate oppression of Palestinians during May. Additionally, we reject his pro-police stance that threatens black and brown people. Yang did not address the walkout immediately, and the Q&A continued. But during the Q&A, one of the students did yell out and ask why Yang supports NYPD and Israel, to which he said he would be happy to answer that question right after. Um, and talk to that student right after, but he actually did talk to us right after, so take a look. What is your, do you have a statement on tonight's walkout? What do those student demands mean to you and how does that make you feel? Uh, you know, I want to focus on uh, the content of what was discussed here about the future and uh, the role of Northwestern students uh, in it. Uh, you know, I, I'd want to focus our attention on that rather than something else truly. Julia, what was the initial purpose of the program? Yes, so I did talk to Ben Chasen yesterday. He is in charge of public relations for NU College Democrats. He said a lot of the reason that they wanted to bring Yang today for this presentation was that he um, has a large stance on universal basic income, which he did address a little bit during the Q&A. He also wanted to hear about um, his presidential race and his mayoral race um, in New York, um, which he did talk a little bit about that as well. And he was also, up until a few minutes ago, still taking questions from students and taking pictures. Back to you guys. Thanks, Julia. Megan? Turning now to COVID-19. Last night, students received a crime notice from Northwestern saying 4,500 COVID-19 testing kits were stolen from a storage room in the Foster Walker complex. And just in is some new breaking information. And it ends. Malia Halkia is live here tonight. Melina, what can, more can you tell us about the situation? Yes, Megan, we just received new information coming from a crime notice email sent to the Northwestern community. Apparently, most of the stolen property was recovered from the suspects who are Northwestern students. And UPD continues to investigate the incident. We don't have any more information about how many COVID tests were found. We do know that each test kit contains two COVID tests, which means that the total value of the stolen kits was more than $100,000, and UPD could not Meanwhile, provide any further information. In Meanwhile, some students found that the test disappearance concerned regarding their safety. I just think it's really weird that people would steal a bunch of COVID tests. It makes me wonder why. It's, I didn't expect anyone to actually get into the place and steal stuff from the school because I thought the security, everything should be like working pretty well. We should have a better security system and then people should be more cautious about everything that might happen to them. So according to officials at the COVID-19 center, the tests stored at Plex are not accessible to students. So questions still remain about why they were stored here. Um, apparently, the campus um, distributes uh, tests across uh, partners such as Plex, but we don't have any more information about what they're used for and where they're stored exactly. We'll keep you updated as we have more information. Reporting live from Plex, Melina Halkia, back to you. Thanks, Melina. Elizabeth? 
In other testing news, Northwestern updated its COVID-19 testing requirements for undergraduates. Students must complete at least one test between October 15th and November 5th, regardless of vaccination status. The exact week is by alphabetical order of your last name. Last week, the university reported 57 new positives. That brings the positivity rate to 1.16%. Turning now to District 65, which includes Evanston and Skokie, the union president tells a board of education meeting that there are too many demands being placed on educators and that something needs to be done. Lily Wolfson has the details. I'm here to state that District 65 continues to be a toxic working environment. This month, District 65 Educators Council president says it's time for change. When a union goes into a board to rally, it's typically because they're trying to make some noise in order to get some attention. Maria Barroso says educators are micromanaged and expected to help with social emotional learning in addition to curating and rewriting curricula. We're not all licensed um, social workers and what we have is some severe trauma that we are trying to handle the best we can, but we're still struggling to figure out what to do. Barroso says NNN could not interview District 65 teachers for legal reasons, but a parent whose twins attend Oakton Elementary in Evanston shares his concerns. I have friends who are teachers and it, it seems overwhelming to me when they describe what's going on. Educators in District 65 want to get past the point of worrying about their contracts and their rights so that they can focus on the issues of social justice that impact the more than 7,000 students in their district. We are totally supporters of the equity and we are totally about centering the children that have been marginalized. Advocating for lighter workloads, Barroso wants to make school a brighter place. Lily Wolfson, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Lily. In other Evanston news, if you want to buy a railroad station, now might be your chance. Union Pacific Railroad is looking to sell its three Evanston railroad stations. This comes after a judge ruled last month that Union Pacific can end commuter train service if it wants. While Metro provides service, those rails are actually owned by Union Pacific. And a city spokesperson told the publication Evanston Now that the process is in, quote, the very early stages and the city has made itself available to the railroad for questions. Now, an update on a story we brought you last week. Despite the city's vaccine mandate, the president of Chicago's police union has discouraged his colleagues from reporting their status to the city. A Chicago judge issued a restraining order against the president of the union to stop him citing irreparable harm. Back here on campus, after two years of negotiations, Northwestern's dining hall and service workers finally reached an agreement with Compass Group, Northwestern's food service provider. NNN's Katrina Pham takes a look at what that means for our school's workers. A weight lifted off the shoulders of Northwestern's Compass workers. Many of my co-workers, they say this is like a dream. Workers voting last week to approve a new contract after their original contract expired more than two years ago. The way we were fighting two years without any change, it was very stressful, very painful. In the new contract, we had better raises, we had the insurance. That a rise to $19.88 per hour a stark difference from their previous salary of $14.05 per hour. They are not making enough for the family, you know. They say negotiating was a long and difficult process. Coming back like with empty hands and telling them we haven't said all, like they keep rejecting our proposals. It was very sad. But a love for the students, keeping them going. I want to be that person that can change the day if they're sad or Working at NU means being a part of a family and making sure your family is taken care of. They are my family, so everything that happened with, with them uh, is like ha happened personally to me. So I, 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 had to, I had to fight for them. Compass did not respond to multiple requests for comment after the vote, but in an earlier statement said details of the new agreement would be released after ratification. But workers, proud of the progress made. We are a human, per human being. Overworked, 
but overjoyed for the first steps for change. Katrina Pham, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Katrina. Members of the union say they will start collaborating with workers from Loyola University to advocate for better conditions. And up next, Afghans find home in Chicago. What one nonprofit is doing to help. Plus, have an ice day and head to the new rink. We'll tell you why you can leave your wallet at home. The Northwestern News Report is back in 60 seconds. At Northwestern, we're wildcats in every way. Welcome back. The fall of Afghanistan to the Taliban took place 7,000 miles away, but it hit home for many in the Evanston and Chicago area. NNN's Kayla Nichols reports. Two months after the Taliban takeover, hundreds of Afghans have settled in Illinois, but more are expected. Just a couple of weeks ago, we were thinking we'll resettle 150 Afghans in through World Relief Chicagoland, and that number has changed and jumped significantly to 235 Afghans we think that will resettle um, in the coming months. Shams Fro, owner of Kapisa Rugs in Evanston, is seeing this firsthand. He immigrated to the U.S. in 2014 after working as an interpreter for the U.S. military. His sister fled to the U.S. during the evacuation. Other family members are still there. Almost everyone has the same problem because what we did working alongside the United States military it puts our families in danger. His business is named after the province where he was born. Most of the rugs come from Afghanistan, a way he says could help the people there. I was expecting what's happening in Afghanistan to happen, looking at the circumstances, and I thought this way I could help the community. Fro says his sister experienced several challenges after coming to the U.S. My sister had to stay in a base for about a month and so basically, she was like, if I knew how hard the times I went through, I would have stayed there and took the rest rather than like basically come and go through all the headache. While many Afghans are still trying to leave the country, Gabby Kime works to help new arrivals adjust to life in the U.S. with World Relief Chicagoland. When we receive um, notice that someone is going to be arriving here in Chicagoland, we will have people, um, volunteers and World Relief staff or um, one or the other meeting people at the airport to welcome them here to their new home. We rely on partnerships with local community um, members, organizations and uh, churches to do what we do. And Kayla joins us now in the studio. Kayla, what can Northwestern students do to help? Yes, there are two main ways, Megan. The first is to volunteer and get involved. And the second would be to call up your elected fit officials. They're the main ones who are creating policy that affects this issue. And so if they are um, very knowledgeable, that way World Relief Chicago can continue um, their mission in helping individuals in this situation. So if you're interested in getting involved, those are the best ways to do it. Thanks so much for that important reporting, Kayla. Elizabeth? Thanks, Megan. Even though the spooky season is upon us, one thing America is finding in short supply is blood. NNN's Liam Bates finds out how Northwestern students can make a difference. Blood in short supply, but donating doesn't have to be a tall order. Donating blood is one of the easiest ways to impact the medical community. Weinberg third year Sloan Warner is working with Northwestern Hillel and Versity to start a blood drive on campus. Like really, it can take 20 minutes of your time and can save a life. Because of the pandemic, 
there's a decrease in blood donations nationwide. It's the worst shortage in Chicago in five years. Now more than ever there is because of the pandemic, people haven't wanted to go give blood. The blood drive will take place right here at the Northwestern Hillel building on Tuesday, November 9th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. We're supporting local communities, we're supporting local hospitals. To donate, you have to be at least 19 and weigh 110 pounds. Warner says it couldn't be easier, especially if you follow a few simple steps. You want to make sure to drink significant amount, amounts of water during the day. Make sure you eat something. Once the donation process is complete, you eat some Oreos, drink some orange juice, and you're good to go. Versity, the company that Northwestern Hillel is partnering with, says that it's critical that local blood drives like these succeed so that blood can stay in the area, reducing the risk associated with travel. Warner also says that blood drives could become a quarterly occurrence if there's high turnout on November 9th. Liam Bates, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Liam. Donors will also receive a $15 e-gift card. From physical health to mental health, students pushing for change in Northwestern's counseling and psychological services, or CAPS. And an end Bridget Aduwadie reports. The group Reform CAPS is demanding the administration make it easier to get help with mental health. Reading through all the responses to our Google form is, it really is just heartbreaking. The group makes Instagram posts of anonymous student experiences with CAPS, documenting problems that come up with trying to set up an appointment and get help with mental health issues. Earlier this month, they met with campus administrators. We wanted to share as many student experiences as possible um, and have them listen to them, uh, as well as going through uh, the problems that we've seen within CAPS, uh, the harm that it's done, and what we're asking for in terms of fixing it. The group seeks to hold the university responsible for inaccessible services, lack of diverse counselors, and insufficient staffing and funding. The university plans to allocate 300,000 to 500,000 to hire three to five more counselors, according to a Friday, October 1st, safety update from the Community Safety Advisory Board. As of October 17th, there are no available phone appointments with the CAPS counselor for Northwestern's Evanston campus. CAPS has also made available same-day virtual appointments, though students may experience wait times. The major issue that comes up is students reach out to CAPS and either they're just like, uh, we don't have any appointments available, you can call our crisis line. Reform CAPS plans to continue working with student affairs to fix the system and develop better supports for students. Bridget Aduwadier, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Bridget. And then attempted to contact CAPS, but they declined to comment. After a couple of windy days, a nice clear evening tonight. Maria Heim joins us live downstairs with the weather. Good evening, I'm Maria Heim with your campus weather forecast for this upcoming week. We're not looking at anything too unusual for the Evanston area. As we head into tomorrow, we're seeing partly cloudy skies with a high of 57 and 49. However, this isn't here to stay as we're expecting a rainstorm from Thursday to Friday. However, that is going to end as we go into Saturday as the Cats take on Minnesota at Bryan Field. However, the high of that is going to be 58 with a low of 45. So make sure you're bringing a coat to the game. This is gonna stay the same as we move into Halloween on Sunday with just partly cloudy skies with a high of 57 and 42 as your low. I'm Maria Heim from Northwestern News Network. Back to you, Elizabeth. Thanks, Maria. Not quite cold enough for ice skating tonight, but you can now go for free in Evanston. During public skating hours at Evanston's Robert Crown Center, Northwestern students, faculty, and staff can present their wild cards and glide onto the ice free of charge, according to a report by Northwestern Now. Skate rentals are included, and throughout the season, Northwestern is sponsoring free skate times for the Evanston community. Thanks, Elizabeth. Well, 2021 marks the 40th year anniversary of Northwestern's Block Museum. The exhibit, Who Says Who Shows What Counts, reflects on the museum's history and looks toward its future. And an end's Ellie Skelly has the story. The Block's new exhibit, Who Says Who Shows What Counts, offers a fresh take on representation in art. It is the Block's 40th anniversary, and we wanted to take that opportunity to celebrate our recent acquisitions, 
many of which have come into the collection through a Gifts of Art campaign focused on history and thinking about history. History and who retells it were key questions for curators Kate Hadley Toffness and Essie Ronco. The curators sought to focus on the voice of the artist. And one of the first uh, decisions we made as co-curators that we did not want to get in the business of trying to narrate the past from the Bloch's perspective. The museum also seeks to empower the Bloch's community. Hints of Northwestern students and faculty members can be seen throughout the exhibit. It was super important to us to include student voices in this process. Northwestern students selected six of the works displayed in the show, and both students and faculty members were involved in writing all of the descriptions. Yeah, so when you call your exhibition, who says, I think that means we, we, we literally have to think you very um, We have to very literally think about who's doing the talking on the walls of, of the exhibition. After 40 years, the block hopes to continue serving its Northwestern community. For future exhibits, expect to see a diverse display of arts and artists. Ellie Skelly, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Ellie. The exhibit is open until December 5th. Coming up, another Medill advisor leaves the school. And Northwestern's club crew competes at the head of the Charles Regatta in Boston. We'll be right back. At Northwestern, we're wildcats in every way. Last Wednesday, one day after former Medill advisor Joy Fernandez had her last day on campus, Medill students received another email from Academic Advising. Now, Medill advisor Jessica Scott's last day will be November 3rd. NNN's Gabrielle Coriati has more on Scott's time at Medill and what losing a second advisor means for students. After five years at Medill, Jessica Scott's departure, leaving one less familiar face in the advising office. I'm inspired by all the students who walk through my door, who have so many dreams. But the inspiration didn't only go one way. She, she had a really fantastic impact um, on the students. Medill losing two advisors in just over two weeks. Students expressing their concerns over the abrupt changes and how Daniel McKenzie will be able to advise all 690 journalism students. It feels very much like um, this was not something that Medill was expecting. For McKenzie, this is not the first time he's been the only Medill advisor. Advisors were added in 2017 and 2018 to make sure students were being fully supported. When you have a relationship with an advisor, it also helps. Because of COVID-19, Mackenzie, used to doing online appointments, says more advising will happen over email. If students want a Zoom or in-person appointment, they can get one, but might need to schedule further in advance. There's a limited number of appointments that are just physically possible. In an email to students Friday, Medill Dean Charles Whitaker saying, quote, we are making staffing changes to make sure the services we provide the Medill student community are not interrupted. But once a new advisor is hired, they won't begin advising right away. It's shadow for a while to understand the different types of appointments we have. Advising students in all parts of their academic journey. Gabrielle Coriati, Northwestern News Network. Gabrielle joins us now. Are there any other changes to advising meetings that Medill students should be aware of? Thanks, Elizabeth. The only other change students should know is that Zoom and in-person appointments, they used to be 30 minutes and they will now be 20 minutes instead. Daniel McKenzie made this change so that he can make sure he's fully supporting all students with their needs and allowing for him to have more appointments every day. Thanks, Gabrielle. Lots to consider, especially with registration for winter courses coming up in three weeks. Megan? Switching gears now, members of the Northwestern Club crew team competed in the head of the Charles Regatta in Boston this weekend. And then Logan Schigiano has more on their performance and their preparation for the event. It all starts shortly after 5 a.m. Every weekday, rain or shine. 
Though crew is a club sport at Northwestern, gearing up for 6 a.m. practices requires just as much, if not more, dedication than a traditional varsity sport. It's just a really fun atmosphere practice. Like, you get to start every day with your friends out on the water. Super peaceful, great start to the day. Through the drive, no deeper, no shallower. But this isn't some leisurely boat cruise. Each practice is intense with drills carefully planned out by the team's coaching staff. Everything boils down eventually, right, to what makes the boat go faster. A lot of it is things like length um, and power on the water and stuff like that. And there's also a lot of technical aspects uh, we kind of refer to as blade work or oarsmanship. The team is divided into varsity rowers and novices, like freshman Lizzie Dosois. I imagine any crew before stepping onto campus. I started being a coxswain this year, and that's kind of the person like in the stern of the boat, kind of like steering. This past weekend, some of the team's best rowers competed at the head of the Charles Regatta in Boston, a series of 64 races that attracted over 11,000 rowers this year. The race this weekend was probably like the most incredible race that I've been to. I've, n I've never seen that many boats on a body of water at once. A big event for a strong team. Logan Schigiano, Northwestern News Network. In the head of the Charles Regatta, the men's four team placed 31st, with the women grabbing 13th in their respective events. The novice teams also had strong performances at the Iowa Chase on Saturday. A team that didn't fare as well this weekend, the Northwestern football team. They took on the University of Michigan this past weekend, and many NU students made the trip out to Ann Arbor to see the game. And it ends Alexia Condota browner has more. Wildcats or Wolverines? Northwestern students traveled to the University of Michigan this weekend to watch the Big Ten football game. There were a lot of students from Northwestern who were also coming, so I wanted to just be with all of my classmates and whatnot here. Students traveled by car, bus, train, or even plane, most arriving to Ann Arbor on Friday. One of my friends lives in Chicago, so his family dropped off his car, and then so we all drove to Michigan together. Before the game started, I talked to some Northwestern students about who they're rooting for and why. I'm rooting for Northwestern, of course. Go Cats! I am dressed for Michigan because I'm hanging out with like all my Michigan friends and I'm sitting in the Michigan student section, so I didn't want to be beat up. But I am secretly rooting for Northwestern. Currently, I have a Northwestern fit on. However, if we get just decked really bad, I have a backup sweatshirt. Northwestern students stayed in hotels or with friends to attend the game held at Michigan Stadium, also known as the Big House. It feels really great to have one of my friends from home sleeping in my dorm, and it also feels great to have one against her football team. She said I would have to sleep in the hallway. Yeah, I told her she had to, if Northwestern won, she was going to have to sleep in the hallway. Yeah. Over 109,000 spectators watched Michigan take home the win 33-7, but Northwestern students remained proud of their team. Go Cats! Yeah. Northwestern's a better place. Trust me, I transferred from the, here. Uh, Michigan's a great place. We're the best place. Alexia Kadota browner Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Alexia. On this week's edition of Rock Talk, we're adding a bit of a sports twist. Much like a post-game interview, we're asking Northwestern students how their midterms went. Hello, I'm Daniel Gross. It's midterm season, and classes are getting more and more intense, so we're outside tech a simple question. How was lecture? Rata. All right, out here right after stat lecture, how'd it feel, man? It was tiring. It was long. It was a long fight, but, you know, I, I, I survived. I made it through. It was brutal on mine, but we made it through. It's okay. He, he carried me. You know, it feels great. I feel so much more prepared. I'm glad I could get all that practice in. You know, it's, it's a good day. All right, so we're here just out of the stats midterm. How are you feeling? I mean, it didn't feel that bad, but my confidence on, on some of those answers, uh, not feeling it. All right, we're here right after astronomy. How'd it feel in there? Uh, it was a little hard, kind of difficult, but feeling all right. I mean, it was just about a lot of different things, you know, just uh, about some certain probability things, uh, some of the basics on that. So uh, what is the probability you did well? Don't tease me like that. <laughs> You know, it made me feel pretty stupid, I'm not going to lie. Something I did not have to walk all the way here to figure out, but, you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. Uh, I'm hoping I'm not going to have to go into the next office hours, but I guess we'll see. All right, talking about planets, talking about space, how many planets are there? Nine. Eight. Nine, including Pluto. I just say, keep pushing forward. 
we don't want to think about this last one and move on to the next. Rata. So Megan, how did midterms week go for you? That is such a great question, Elizabeth. I wish I knew the answer so far. I actually just finished my last one today, so I should find out in a couple days. But I'm, it, I'm happy to be able to get a little bit more sleep now of that course. midterm season is over. What about you? Of course. Um, I mean, it was okay for me. I had essays, so I'm just waiting to get those back. But I hope yours goes well. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> well, when we come back, audiences are back in person at campus performances. What performers and musicians are saying, don't go away. At Northwestern, we're wildcats in every way. Welcome back. It's time to play the music. It's time to light the lights. After 18 months, it's time for Northwestern audiences to fill campus performances. In it ends, Andrew Rowan takes us backstage. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Idaho. Those are words that haven't been heard in person at Northwestern in a long time. It's been amazing. School of Communications junior Kristen Wagner directed this past weekend's performance of Islander from the Jewish Theater Ensemble. It's her first work in person. There are sections in the show where we interact with the audience and where we speak directly to them. While actors will be unmasked, audience members are required to have their faces covered. But even so, the actors feed off their presence. The show just like comes to life with people in the room. That's something that's true for being in School of Music students, too. There is an energy uh, and a form of communication that's happening from the audience feeding back to the performers. Jerry Teets is the concert manager for Bean In. He's been busy prepping the venues for the fall's 30 concerts. What mitigation strategies and protocols we have in place and that do still pose some degree of, of challenge to any musician uh, is still a very small price to pay. For, for social distancing reasons, you won't be able to sit here or in the first three rows. But even all the way back here, performers say it's infinitely closer than it was online. I think it's going to be feeling uh, pretty electric in, in our spaces when we finally start uh, sharing our music. Audiences sitting back, relaxing, and enjoying the show together. Andrew Rowan, Northwestern News Network. Tickets this quarter are free for being in concerts. As of this morning, 5,997 tickets have been sold. That's about 24% of all available seats. You can get yours at the Bean in Concerts website. So Megan, are there any uh, concerts you're looking to see? Well, I got chills just hearing that music uh, at that in the package and that story. I'm excited to see all all the performances I can. That's something I really miss during the pandemic, not being able to sit in a theater and to hear performances. What about you? Of course, of course, I'm looking to go um, support my friends, support fellow Northwestern Wildcats, so that should be nice. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. I'm Megan Leibowitz. And I'm Elizabeth Betts. Be sure to follow us on social. We're NNN underscore news. Thanks for watching and good night.